Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book which comes to us from Cambridge University Press. It's an important book in their handbook series and it took our attention because of the content. It's called The Cambridge Handbook of Disaster Risk Reduction and International Law. So it's the interface between risks, all the disaster bonds we have, and international law and how it operates. It's been edited by a number of people with a lot of contributions. Um, I'll mention the names of the editors first and get them out of the way. Uh, Katja Samuel, Marie Aronson Storia and Kirsten uh, Nakjavani uh, Bookmiller. And I do um, apologise if I've got these pronunciations uh, wrong. Uh, but thank you to all three of you and also the contributors for the work that's been uh, done in this area. For the review, I've given it a, um, a title, a refreshing new handbook on the increasing natural and human-made disasters facing the planet. We've, we've had them in the past, we're going to get them in the future, and I think this is one of the books that will help immensely in an area which, because people are much more aware of things today, because we're very much more global, this book has a, an appeal. Let's have a look at it first of all. It's a hardback, there it is there. See that front page, the spine there, and then the back. You can see the detail on the back is very substantial. It's got a dust cover, so that talks about the people who've actually written this book. Um, they're very substantial, uh, experienced people in their own area. The front of the book has some blurb about it. If I just go to the back of the book first of all, as I say, it's a heavy book. It's well, very well um, made. Uh, as, as to be expected from Cambridge. Um, there is the index and it's got page numbering. So you could, should be able to find things pretty quickly. It's not a big index at all. You can see where it runs. And then you can see the actual book itself. There it is. You've got the basic body text and you've got quite a lot of footnoting on each page to actually substantiate what's being said. The front of the book, that's the actual blurb about it, and I've borrowed a bit of that for the review. Then there's the front, main front page there. Then you've got after that the stuff from Cambridge University Press. Then you've got the contents section and the names of the people in each of the s chapters who have been responsible for writing that particular chapter. And it's split into six different parts. Then there's some figures um, actually included there and then you've also got the details of the individual contributors whom I can't go through by name but you can see there are a lot <coughs> excuse me there are a lot of them um, the editors have brought together a very wide field of, of expertise there's the forward which is well worth reading uh, that comes from um, Paolo Albrito uh, he's from the chief of the Regional Office for Europe and Central Asia and the UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you've got the preface from the editors there, which just sets out what they're doing. Then you've got the tables of cases. There are quite a lot of cases. Of course, a lot of uh, interest that's uh, happened in this area. Very useful abbreviations. Whenever you deal with the UN, <laughs> you always need abbreviations anyway. And there are a lot of them in this area. You can see that there. Still running all the way through, and then we end up with the usual stuff at the back. There we go, all the UN ones right at the back. There we go. Then we get into the introduction itself by the editors, and you've got the footnoting, as you can see, at the side. And then after the introduction, we get into the uh, work, the, the detailed work itself. Part 1, International Framework and the DR. <coughs> Excuse me again, it's a bit of dust. And then you've got uh, the actual specific chapters and the name of the person then you've got the footnoting and obviously it explains who these people are and what value they bring to the book there it is it's a heavy book as I say but a very good book I'm very impressed with it and I do think this is an important book because um, apart from anything else any form of disaster costs a great deal of money and in a global society we need to know what is going on at any given time so what do we say about the book well we say the CUP always excel with their specialist legal handbooks and this latest publication is, is no different. It covers disaster risk reduction, DRR, as it's abbreviated in the book, and of course the interface with international law. The new work is on uh, DRR um, and international and has been edited of course by, as I say, um, <coughs> Katja, Marie and Kirsten.
save the surnames it's a bit easier to mention them like that and of course it's got 31 contributors in total with a most impressive uh, group of credentials the goal of the title of course is to prevent or at least mitigate the possibility and impact of all forms of disasters which result in uh, in immense human misery and suffering and their greatest hope say the editors is that in some modest way it might contribute positively towards strengthening current and future disaster risk mitigation efforts making a real difference to the plight of even a few precious souls that's the aim and frankly in a global society it's this sort of book which is worth its weight in gold because it's giving us some direction about what to do. Of course the result here in our view is an admirable success because the subject matter continues to shoot up the international political agenda. The problem of course remains that the number, intensity and impact of diverse, uh, diverse forms of natural and human-made disasters are increasing, hence the title I've given it for this review. The contributors comment that in response the international community has shifted its primary focus away from disaster response to prevention and improved preparedness. However, of course, the existing globally agreed upon roadmap is the ambitious SENDI framework for uh, DRR 2015 to 2030. And that's central to which um, we will get a better understanding of disaster risk management and mitigation. And of course, the Sendai um, framework urges innovative in implementation, especially multi-sectoral and multi-hazard coherence. Now, I know that's a little bit technical in terms of the words, but you know what that means, and that means we've got to have a much wider picture of what we're going and get, get some links to it so that people are talking to each other. Unfortunately, the legal sector itself remains relatively underdeveloped, including a paucity of supporting DRR law, scholarship and minimal uh, cross-sectoral engagement. That's really because in the past they haven't bothered putting it bluntly and now it's time that we started bothering a bit more because the planet's getting a bit smaller as more and more people come into the world we need to look after our planet and we need to see where we can prevent some of these things happening in the first place so the time for action is now and the handbook offers many constructive and useful observations in our opinion one common difficulty of course which is identified by the writers is that this interface is attributable to limited understanding by other sectors about law's dynamic potential as a tool of disaster risk mitigation despite the availability of many risk-related norms across a broad spectrum of legal regimes. And described, of course, as a unique and timely handbook by Cambridge, uh, they have brought together global and multi-sector perspectives on one of the most pressing policy issues of our times. And I'm, I know that sounds a bit dramatic, but it's true. And we can't recommend it highly enough in this book, this handbook, with the current parlous state of the planet and where we are. And you just have to see some of the demonstrations around the world at the moment to realise that, that, that there are serious issues that need to be addressed and addressed quickly. Um, the handbook introduces concepts of DRR, especially DRR law, which I thought was quite interesting because it, it means an increased awareness and understanding of the existence and function of DRR law at a key time in its development, which is now. It highlights the critical need for broader cross-sectoral engagement on DRR issues and looks at multi-sectoral approaches by the Sende framework, especially between law, science and technology. And we've got the framework running through for another 10, 11 years. So there's plenty of time to get on and do something serious. We do need cooperation internationally, and that, again, is where one of the weaknesses, alas, is. The contributors aim, of course, to contribute to the development of DRR, related law, policy and practice, as well as a better informing uh, law and policy makers on the growing importance of DRR law through a comparative analysis of multiple um, regimes. And I think that's quite important because the result of a comprehensive statement on DRR is the increasingly important area within international law, which is a sort of bit of a, um, a bit of a, a difficult concept for some to understand because obviously international law covers both private and public. But 
obviously what we're talking about here is the need that we have to help um, actually people understand um, who are involved within the international law sphere what actually what sort of assistance will be required in the future and obviously that's what you will get from both the academic world looking at looking at it and also the practitioner world uh, as i say this matter is actually becoming of greater importance um, in the in the next certainly in the next few years and we are pleased of course to report that the handbook succeeds in its current mission on drr in our view brilliantly and the handbook <coughs> was first published on the 28th of february 2019 obviously we're we're running through to 2030 with the send a uh, framework here is the book again. There's the front, there's the spine, then there's the back. Now, just opening it in the middle, this is chapter 12, Embracing Regionalism, Lessons from the UN Regional Seas Programme. Uh, and that's actually the Sendai framework, and you can see how that it is structured. There again, you've got paragraph numbering at the sides, and again, all the way through, you've got a limited amount of numbering for the actual um, the actual various headings, subheadings used, but you can see the, the detail that it's gone into. It's not an easy book to read. I, I did find this a, a heavy book in all senses of the word, but this is an important subject and it's one that is not going to go away. And I think it will become more and more important, especially for the younger generations coming ahead, who will be looking at what's going on and thinking, well, some of this stuff we can avoid and let's see if we can do something about it. Thank you very much to all the people involved, the contributors and the three editors, and of course to Cambridge University for another excellent handbook in their series. Thank you to all. Bye-bye.